This is the Real Estate Happy Hour, and I'm your host, Chris Wright. It's a fun place where we talk real estate, pop culture, and what's trending. Hey, I might even give you some good advice. So grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and take a listen. Unless you're driving, of course. I'll see you guys on the other side. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? This is a special edition of the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly. My name is Chris Wright. And a um, little backstory is I used to have a podcast called Seven Minutes. And what that was, it, it was a podcast where I uh, interviewed some move, movers and shakers, some influential people in the capital region of New York, Albany, Saratoga Springs area. And um, I got kind of sidetracked. I started doing other projects. But I had a, a handful of recordings that I never got to air. Um, that, that show had become kind of popular in our area. People asked me who was the next person. People had called me saying they wanted to interview for the show. And like I said, I, life happened. I got sidetracked and I never got to continue seven minutes. Um, fast forward a year later, I started this new podcast, the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly, um, and I'm really excited about it. But what I need to do, because those people, out of respect, they gave me their time um, they spilled out their life stories, and I really want to make sure that we get those stories out there. So um, I want to thank them first, but I wanted to say um, tonight, the first person that gets to go, um, I'm going to present to you uh, Miss Jennifer Hendricks Fogg. Oh! Yeah, nice round of applause there. But anyway, um, Jennifer's an amazing person. Uh, she had a child born with special needs, and she's going to tell us about that story. A lot of people, when they face adversity, they kind of uh, ball up in a corner and they don't um, they don't live life to the fullest. And what I can say about about uh, Jennifer is that Jennifer has made the most of this, and she built a foundation called Logan Strong. She has gala. She has a whole committee of people, a five hundred one c three not for profit organization, and she helps so many children throughout our area. Um, who has uh, cancer and other special needs as well. And I went to the gala last year, and I want to say that I was really amazed by some of the stories I heard, um, some of the happenings that's going on around the foundation, and I'm really proud of her. So here's her video. Um, and like I said, I do have others that's coming in, in the coming days. But um, right now, let's give a nice round of applause for Jennifer Hendricks Fogg. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Seven Minutes. I'm your host, Chris Wright. I got my lovely co-host, Beverly Swim. Hi, everyone. Good. So today, we're very excited. We're going to interview a hard worker, a passion, a lady I'm very passionate about. I've known her for years. I used to do, what was that called? Mob? What? Mob? Flash mob. Flash mobs with her in the streets. This <laughs> Jennifer Hendricks Fogg. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to see you both. Oh God, it, this is, I am so glad that you and I have reconnected. Yeah. And it wasn't that we were mad at it. We just got busy. Our lives yeah. got busy. Life. We, we had children, we got married. We, like yes. all these things happened. And it was like, you and I used to be like connected and then we yeah. lost touch. And I was like, I gotta reach out to Jennifer and just talk and, we, and we're, we're back together again. It's awesome. I'm so glad you did. I'll so be too, me too. I've known Bev for years as well. So this is, this is wonderful. Uh, so let's talk about, I'm going to start with Logan Strong because I am just, I don't know if pride is the right thing, but you have this lovely child, you know, you've had some challenges and just talk to us about what Logan Strong is all about, how you're doing with your family and all that good stuff. Yeah. So for those that don't know, obviously my son Logan was born with a very rare brain tumor at three months old. We were told several times he was never going to survive. Uh, we were told he would never walk, talk. He doesn't. He runs and he's learning his words and he's signing and he's communicating and he's just he's just a miracle. So through everything we've been through, you know, obviously there's the huge Aflac connection. Um, but, you know, we decided to start a foundation to give back to other local families battling childhood cancer and other other ailments, really. That is that's amazing. And um, so I looked I looked at the Logan Strong website today. Um, it was more than I anticipated. There's a lot going on on there. 
Uh, tell me how, how the whole foundation's working. Yeah, so I'm so happy to say that we have a full board, we have a full working board, we have all the pieces together finally. So we started the foundation in January of 2018 and Logan was still in treatment. So we kind of fill in some of the gaps that other foundations don't cover. So we provide uh, fundraising opportunities. We provide awareness opportunities. We provide gift cards to families as well as Albany Med. And I'm so happy that in just in the past few months, our board has finally become whole is how I like to put it because we just got all the right people in all the right positions. And we've got a lot of great things happening. We have our first gala um, coming up on Friday, May 19th. I'll I'm be super there. Super excited. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe DJ Chris, right? Um, maybe the DJ that night. I will be. Memory serves. <laughs> yep. I vol um, I'm volunteering so my excited. services. Yes. <laughs> So that's going to be at the Armory Studios uh, where Van Gogh is. So it's a great, great connection that we've got over there. And yeah, things are, things are amazing. We'll be at the Women's Expo this coming weekend too. Oh, how can, I'll be there. Oh, you'll be there, Beverly? I will, yeah. Awesome. Good. How can people um, help with Logan Strong Foundation? Yeah, so the Logan Strong Foundation. So it's loganstrongfoundation.org. And there's uh, volunteer opportunities, there's sponsorship opportunities. They can sign up for our newsletter to kind of keep track of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we're always looking for committee members to help with our fundraising efforts. So right now, like I said, we have our gala coming up. It's our first year doing it. And then in September will be our sixth year for our annual golf tournament. So we're trying to hit kind of both sides of the coin with our golfers and our non-golfers. Because I'm not a golfer. <laughs> <laughs> but you will try. I don't know about that. I don't know if it's going to be safe. <laughs> yeah. Have, have, um, are, are you doing anything with um, St. Jude or Ronald McDonald House at all? So we don't do anything with St. Jude, but we do partner with the Ronald McDonald House. As a matter of fact, we were one of the first sponsors for the Krantz Cottage in Lake George. Um, we sponsored their dining room. Uh, so we donated $25,000 to Ronald McDonald House to sponsor that dining room. And it's actually the first um, uh, facility like that of its kind in the entire Ronald McDonald House world where they have a retreat location for families. That's exciting. Yeah, it's beautiful. We, we just had a board retreat up there a few weeks ago and it's absolutely beautiful. Great, great, great. Yeah, you're an accomplished author. I am. You wrote a book. I did. And Tiny Miracles? Yes. I have it in my bookshelf right here. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Hey, oh, there it is. Yep. Tiny <laughs> Miracles. Hey, what is that book about? Tell us what, what that's about. So I, I've always wanted to write a book. And after going through everything we went through with Logan, having the worst case scenario thrown at us a million times, mm -hmm. I really wanted to share our story of hope, faith, and resilience. So I wrote a book about the first five years of our journey with, you know, the, the real, the raw, the ugly, everything we went through. I mean, I shared things in the book that, you know, I didn't share in my blog posts. Mm -hmm. I, there's a part in the book that I wrote when another mother lost her daughter mm -hmm. that I had to call her before my book came out to say, Hey, I never told you this before but I need to get this out because it's in the book. And I thought, I, I didn't know how she was going to react. And yeah. she's like, okay. And I was like, oh, and I just started bawling. She's like, you know, we all have our journey. Like you, you know, we all have our right to feel however it is that we feel. And it just, she and I have become very close. Unfortunately, like I said, she did lose her daughter, but you know, we're all in this world together. It's, it's like the worst, best club you're a part of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I understand that. That's that's wow. That's intense. So you um, where like in twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four, do you ex expect to expand on Log the Logan Strong Foundation? Like, where do you expect it to go? So we're definitely growing the Logan Strong Foundation. We just like I said had a retreat recently, and we're expanding our services to more than just cancer families. 
Um, it started obviously because of Logan and what he's gone through, but now as we go through his developmental stages, he does have develop developmental delays. He has hearing aids. He's learning to talk. He's learning to eat. He was diagnosed with autism. So we really want to have the Logan Strong Foundation kind of follow what Logan's going through mm -hmm. because we can't be the only ones. And we want to support those families that maybe don't know where to find services, that you know, have a crippling diagnosis that they don't know what their next steps are, mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe they just need someone to talk to. We're, we're creating, as a matter of fact, we were just group texting with the board. We're creating uh, Moms on Monday. So we're going to create just a gathering of moms the first Monday of the month where moms can just come out and be with other moms. No judgment, you know, vent share ideas, what's working, what's not working, just to get out of the house, whatever. So that's something we're working on as well, because we really want to just empower the whole family mm -hmm. and embrace and share awareness with, you know, we all, we all have our shit, right? Like right. good, bad, ugly. Like we all have stuff that we may or may not talk about. Like I, I posted a few weeks ago about, uh, asking what do you call your child with special needs is it this I remember is it that? that yeah and yeah and it it was so weird because people commented that i had no clue had children that had special needs mm. so it, it was it was nice you know to, to but, be but like, it was oh, shocking right and i'm yeah. not alone so like why yeah. are we not talking about it right. mm. I think it's so important what you're doing to allow the people a voice, you know, to be able to talk about or have someone listen to them because, you know, depression and sadness and suicide has just skyrocketed mm -hmm. as of late. And I don't think there's an, uh, you know, I don't think there's an opening for the next year. It was psychiatrists and therapists. Yeah. There's just no outlet. People don't have an outlet. Yep. So it's great that you're providing that. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things too, in regards to that, like when Logan was first diagnosed, someone had said to me, well, why didn't you, you know, join a support group? And I'm like, I don't want to join a support group so I can listen to everybody else's kids with cancer and, you know, take on their pain. Like I have enough shit of my own. Right. But I feel like if we create this moms on Monday thing, it's not a support group in that term, mm -hmm. but it's a support group gathering mm -hmm. I, you know obviously i'll play with that terminology but it, it's not it's no pressure we're like a support group you're like hi i'm Jen, you know what i mean like i just feel it's a little different where if it's just a gathering it's like hey oh your kid plays soccer how did you you know whatever right. the case may be it's it's more you know laid back and, and non-invasive i feel so let's talk about how um aflac has impacted families like your own right yeah because AFLAC yeah. has a cancer feature. So why, why don't you tell us how that works? Yeah, so I've been with AFLAC now, it'll be 11 years in May. Mm -hmm. And never in a million years, you know, I have all the policies, obviously. Never in a million years did I think that I would have to use my, my cancer plan on my child, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, thankfully I had the cancer plan. It supported and helped our family tremendously. I didn't work for a year and a half. And to take it a step further, AFLAC sponsors Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, the AFLAC Cancer and Blood Disorder Center mm. that actually wrote Logan's treatment plan. Wow. So mm. I get chills every time I share that because I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. And as much as our situation sucks, like I know he chose us for a reason. Like I know he was meant to be my son. And the whole AFLAC connection is just a miracle, right? Like it really is. So let's talk about the, your 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 success at AFLAC because AFLAC's one of those companies, like when you joined it, people are like, oh, she's doing AFLAC, right? And then you look at Jennifer 10 years later and it's like, oh my God, she's like yeah. crushing it, right? So how, how'd your career get to where it is? I mean, you're oh very successful in AFLAC. Yeah, so I was yeah. actually hired with AFLAC 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, thank you. I'm not selling insurance for commission only. Thank you, come again. Right. <laughs> right, not not for me. 
Right. And the opportunity represented itself. My husband, we just started dating at the time, had come home and said he had to get up early for an AFLAC meeting. It happened to be my friend, Michelle, who was trying to recruit me prior. And I was like, I'll go with you. Let's go. Let's go see what's happening. And she just asked me, she's like, are you ready to join? And I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Because at the time, who, was, who, who's, Michelle? That, who's Michelle? Who's Michelle? Michelle I know Nolan. That- Okay, I know her. Yep, I yeah, I yeah. know that I knew her. Okay, yeah. Yep. Shout Michelle. out Michelle. Um, and she, she's like, "Are you ready?" And I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." I hated the job I was in, and at the time, and this was around the time we did the flash mob, I was teaching dance, yep. and I was teaching dance to inner city kids after school three days a week. So there was Remember. no way I could get a nine to five job, right? And be like, "Hey, I need to leave at two o'clock three days a week." Not happening. So I selfishly was like, all right, I'll try it. Like I get freedom, flexibility, unlimited income, whatever, I'll try it. And I killed it. I, you know, I'd been in sales forever. I job hopped. Like I was such a job hopper. I think my longest job before that was like a year and a half. But I've always been in sales. Yeah. So when I started, I just reached out to my network. And I was like, Hey, I started a new job. Can, can you just listen to what I have? And they're like, okay. I ended up being the top account closer my first year. Mm -hmm. I blew out my numbers. Um, I just got promoted to a district sales coordinator a few months prior to Logan's diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Took some time off, went back to work in January of 2018, crushed my numbers for two years. In December of 2019, we lost our nanny. So I had to make, I, I made the decision to step down from management because my son was more important. Mm-hmm. And thankfully I did because then three months later, COVID hit and the world shut down. So I was like, I don't know how I would have managed a group of agents at that point, mm-hmm. but I've been crushing it ever since. And I actually had the best year of my career last year. I doubled my business and I was number number four in the entire state. Crazy. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and the, 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 the worst, best part is I, I work like part-time. Oh. Like I'm just, I'm just, I'm good at what I do mm-hmm. and I've got connections and I just build those relationships and I've been doing it for so long that, you know, I'm, I'm the Aflac girl. And plus oh. I've got a very, you know, I've got a very powerful story to go along with it. Mm-hmm. I love the yeah. phrase, the worst, best part. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. That's part of my lingo now. The worst, best well, part. Because my 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 higher ups are always like, don't tell people that you only work time because they're going to think they can too. And I'm like, well, it's the Aflac dream is what we call it, right? Like I busted my ass the first six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years of my career to where now, you know, I have the flexibility. I pick up my son every day from school. I take him to all his doctor's appointments. I take him to all his therapies. You know, I work during the day while he's at school. I wrote a book. I have a foundation. Like I can do all this stuff because I busted my butt to get where I am. That's awesome. What tips do you have to share with people who might be just starting out? That's a great question. You know, one of the things that really helped me when I first started my career and even to this day is time blocking. And that's, you know, I don't believe in time management because you can't manage time because time just is. So time blocking is really helpful for me. So when I was first started, I, like I said, I was teaching a few days a week. So a couple of mornings I would just have my office days. And then the other days I would make my sales days or my appointments days. But now I actually, because I have so much going on, it's hard for me to like do half days with stuff. So I typically do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Aflac. Mm -hmm. Wednesday's like a free day to do writing or whatever it is I'm working on. And then Fridays I devote to my foundation. So I'm not jumping back and forth throughout the day because let's, you know, as much as we think we can multitask we know that it's not good, right? right? It's not good. So (laughs) I try to schedule my days that way. I mean, obviously it's not perfect. Things happen, things come up, you know, a client has to have a meeting on a Wednesday. It is what it is, but I really try to structure it around that. And then I, you know, obviously make time for my family, my weekends, my board knows that family comes first. Like 
no guilt, no excuses. Like it is what it is. And you make time for Chris Wright at Lake Ridge Restaurant. Oh my gosh! Yes, we're we're overdue. You were overdue. We got to meet up again and have. But some shout wine. out to Lake Ridge because I bartended there for seven years or so, and the first two years of my Aflac career, I bartended there part time. Shout out to Lake Ridge Round Lake. It's awesome. Good time. Oh my God, good yes. food. Good drink. Yes. And great and great staff, by the way. Great staff, and the food is amazing. So my wife and I, we went there for our anniversary dinner. Was it anniversary, right? Yeah. It was anniversary, yep. Because we do so much anniversary, Valentine's, Mother's Day. It's always something, right? I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Good, good. Beverly, did you have a question for her? You were going to say something? Uh, yeah, I mean, I had so many things going on in my <laughs> yeah, mind. I know, I saw your face. As you I was were like... talking. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to interrupt you, though, because, you you know, you have all these, all these great thoughts. But, I mean, I guess one thing is you are giving all of the time. What are you doing for you? You know, it. yeah, I actually do a lot for me and I do it purposely. I get up two hours earlier than my than the boys every day. I work out, I meditate, I journal. You know, the first two hours of the day are my time. My husband is, is so gracious. He, he normally takes care of Logan in the morning so I can have that time because once they get up, you know, who knows what's going to happen next. I schedule regular massages, facials. I get my nails done. I, you know, I do girls trips. I have actually, I'm going away the end of this month. There's another organization called, oh my gosh, a mother's rest. And it, they, they negotiate with bed and breakfasts around the U S for special needs moms. So it's like 150 bucks and I'm going to a bed and breakfast for four days. It's awesome. Wow. And then in April, my girlfriend and I are going on a retreat in Cancun. Actually, um, Lisa Powell Graham is doing a retreat in Cancun in April that I'm going on. So my goal last year was to crush my numbers, which I did, and I maxed out my bonuses. So I'm reinvesting in myself to take the next steps because I know you were kind of alluding it to it earlier. So I'm going to, I'm going to, pop your bubble. My, 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 my big goal this year is to do a Ted talk. So I'm reinvesting in myself. Um, I hired a business coach. I hired a, a marketing coach. I hired a TEDx coach. So I'm reinvesting in me to kind of take things a step further. Is, is your, um, is your TEDx coach, Kenneth, Kenneth Miller? So I've got He's awesome. Ken. He's I've amazing. Got, I've got Ken. I've got Lindsay, and I've got uh, I don't know if you know Brandon Eastman. I don't. You got to know him. He's he's only twenty nine years old, and well, what am I saying? That Amanda's the same. She's freaking ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he's brilliant. So he's like my business coach. Next time you talk to Kenneth, ask him about the scarf. Say Chris Wright told me to ask you about the scarf. He'll I have a call rest. with him in two weeks. I think I'll, okay. I'll ask him. Chris Wright in the scarf. I've been wearing scarves ever since. That's awesome. <laughs> have you I have a, I'm have. doing a session with Lindsay in April, too. Okay. I love the one that you too. did? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Good. Yeah. I'm super excited. Have you decided what your what your um, content is going to be about? So, so, yeah, great question. I So, going through what I've been through, you know, the, the big word is resilience, right? And one of the things that I've done is I've come up with, I call it the three I's of resilience, survive, drive, and thrive. Mm -hmm. So I just did my first presentation on it a few weeks ago. I've got a lot of tweaking to do. I got a lot of great feedback. So I'm really going to kind of switch it around on that and, 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 and really expand on that and either do something like with resilience or like you were asking before making time for yourself, how to make time for yourself, you know, how to make time for yourself as a special needs mom, how to survive, what, whatever. Um, Lindsay is actually really helping me with that as well. So it's definitely something that I'm going to hone in on more. But again, that's why we hire coaches, right? That's, that's Lindsay Ray. Doing. Lindsay Ray is such an amazing storyteller and speaker. So I'm, um, by the way, she's going to be, um, this is almost going to be like season, seven minutes seasons. We're in season one, but she's definitely going to be part of season two because yeah. I didn't 
once I discovered her, I said, oh my God, I, I could, I could talk to her for an hour. She, um, <laughs> well, when I went to New York city a few weeks ago, I was like, what do I wear? So I'm literally like photographing my entire closet and sending it to her. Like she was helping me. And then when I just went to Georgia, I did the same thing. I'm like, what I'm, I'm meeting, you know, well, I don't want to spill it. I'm, I'm spilling all your, all your, all your wonder here. I had a meeting That's with right. the CEO of Aflac last week when I went to Georgia and I'm like, what do I wear? So like, I'm just like, sh like I'm virtually shopping with her. Like, yeah, she's awesome. So since you mentioned it, tell us why you went to see the CEO of Aflac. Oh. That's huge. So yeah. So, um, about a month ago, I received a phone call from my market director who's in charge of New York state and the CEO of Aflac has a, a big push on our cancer product this year. Mm. And they were the, the vice president of sales was coming to New York city for another meeting and wanted to interview somebody that had experience with the cancer plan. And I was obviously the first person who they thought of. So I went down to New York city and I was interviewed by Aflac uh, as a cancer mom and as an agent. And, you know, do I sell the cancer plan differently now than I did prior to Logan's diagnosis, which obviously I do. So that was a whole interview for that. And then I had been planning the trip to Georgia last week for six months because I mentioned the hospital is down there that wrote Logan's treatment plan. And now that, you know, restrictions are lifted and Logan's a little early, a little older, I, I've been dying to meet the doctor, like how often is it that you get to do that? Mm -hmm. And my husband's best friends live down there. So it just worked out, um, you know, location wise. Right. So I had never been to Aflac headquarters. So I reached out to my friend, Chris, that's in communications at Aflac. And I was like, Hey, while I'm in Georgia, can I get a tour of Aflac headquarters? And he's like, absolutely. And then after the New York city trip, this was all before that. And then after the New York city trip, Two weeks ago, Chris was like, oh, by the way, I got you on the big man's calendar. <laughs> and I was like, what? What? <laughs> so, yeah, I had I was on the CEO's calendar last week. Such a nice guy. It, it was just such a great experience. I got to also meet um, the claims person that helped me with my claim when I oh, filed cool. Logan's. So it was just, it was just a great experience. I got to go to headquarters, meet the CEO, meet my claims guy, meet the doctor, tour the hospital. Like it was just really awesome. What, what's, what's FLEX revenue typically? I oh mean, gosh. I know it's public knowledge, but you don't, do you know? Ask Google. I'll ask Google. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, hey, listen, we're I'm at lucky the end. I know my numbers. <laughs> uh, that was, you, you told some very amazing and compelling stories. Um, uh, Beverly always likes to end these interviews with her favorite question. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate coming up and that's so exciting about doing the TED Talk. Do you have anything else that is on your horizon? Oh, I already spilled it, huh? Yeah, so really, you know, the TED Talk, I really want to speak more. Um, the other thing, I can I can share this, this is something I haven't shared, is, you know, obviously I'm doing more podcasts. I want to share our journey more. I created that program. I'm going to expand on that TED Talk. And then my other big goal is to have a movie about Ooh. our journey. Yeah, I pause because I used to say a lifetime movie, but I swear too much for that. So it might have to be Netflix. Wait a minute, who's gonna write the screenplay? What do you mean? You're gonna write the screenplay? It's already written. It's true, true. All right. Well, listen. I just have to figure out who's going to play me in the movie. Th that's a Lake Ridge conversation. I like it. All right, All right listen, guys. Thanks so much, Jennifer. <laughs> this is if this wasn't enough time, but I like to keep them short so people stay interested and engaged. Uh, but listen, um, thanks so much. We'll do it again, and I think you'll be a guest again and again because we'll have to talk about TED Talk. We'll have to talk about the movie script. We'll have to talk about everything. Yes. And then we'll go from there. All right. Let's do another flash mob too while we're at it. <laughs> I'm up for it. Let's do it. I, except that we're older, so we have to see how our bodies take it. You might be. I'm like, hey. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jennifer, you enjoy the rest Thank of your you night, guys. okay? I love you both right. so much. You take Thanks, care. Jennifer. Great to see you. You bye -bye. too, guys. Thanks. So there you go. Um, that was the interview with uh, Jennifer Strong. I'm a Jennifer Strong. Jennifer Fogg.
Logan Strong Foundation. That interview took place on February 28th, 2023. As she mentioned in the interview, um, we had a uh, the first gala, annual gala, and the next gala, just um, so you know, is coming up this May, 20, May 3rd, 2024. So make sure you get tickets because that money goes towards a great foundation. Um, and it's a wonderful charity. It's called the Gold Gala. It's at the Armory Studios and uh, on 125 Washington Ave in Schenectady. Uh, the website is loganstrongfoundation.org. Um, so make sure you do that. As I mentioned, uh, fast forward a year from that interview, um, she mentioned going to Georgia and she's there now for the great feeding program um, for uh, cancer patient uh, kids. And um, so uh, fortunately her family, Logan, they're taking advantage of that opportunity. Um, and also um, she's working on some other things. So Tiny Miracles has, has done well as a book. And Jennifer mentioned recently to me that she wants to do a second book. And she also talked about her movie. So maybe that book will turn into a movie or that book will turn into some type of podcast series or something like that. But knowing Jennifer, um, it never stops. And um, once again, I'm just looking forward to working with her. But thanks again for joining us for the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly Special Edition, the seven-minute interviews. Some people want to know, why did I call it seven-minute interview? Seven is just a very special number in my life. It always has been. Um, so it has nothing to do with the time of the interviews, but the seven minutes podcast was something I, I really liked doing. And um, now I'm just going to uh, implement it with the Real Estate Happy Hour. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned something from it. hope you were inspired by it. And um, I look forward to talking to you guys. You guys uh, take care. All right, bye-bye.